Good morning. Welcome to Garrett's Custom and Outdoors. I am Aaron Garrett. Today we're going to be making a streamer spinner. What is a streamer spinner, you ask? It is a spinner made entirely on a streamer hook. It's about a $1 lure, so there's not a lot of components. I'll show you the components here and we'll get to building it. All right. So we are taking our size six streamer, 4X long, 2X strong, Gamakatsu traditional series hook. First thing we're gonna do, and the only time you're gonna see pliers, there's no wire bending, nothing in this video. First thing we're gonna do is crimp the barb, and what that's gonna do is gonna allow us to pass, oh, see, we're out of frame already. What this is gonna do is allow us to pass the beads and the clevis over the hook. Now for where I'm fishing, it's re uh, required for it to be barbless, so this isn't a huge detriment. So the first thing we're gonna pass through is the, the blade and the clevis, which I pulled out and now I don't see. So uh, there it is. So the first thing we're gonna pass through is the blade and the clevis. So I'm going to thread the clevis, or th put the blade on the clevis, thread the clevis. I'm making sure we run it the right way. Try to get it past that barb. Mm -hmm. mm, need to get the barb a little smaller. Maybe do I have a... Oh, there's a flat portion on the pliers there. Use the flat portion. The non-ribbed uh, portion. There we go. No more barb. I'm assuming the barb was in one of the little grooves of the pliers. So, again... The annoying clevis and the annoying spinner blade. You want very thin, lightweight blades. You don't want big, heavy blades uh, for for these spinners. Okay, top end up. You want it to go this way. It's going to go this way. There we go. Might have to bend it a little bit to get it to go around. Go, go, go. We can straighten out the clevis later. There we go. And now that we're around the bend, just pull the clevis back a little bit so the eyes of the clevis are lined up. That way they, just making sure that it spins freely. We've made sure that the blade, the convex portion of the blade is pointing up. And now we will put, find our, oh no, I didn't grab a bearing swivel. Bearing swivel. Bearing swivel is a small metal swivel, or not, ooh, bead. Bearing bead. Long box. Bearing bead is a small metal bead that acts as a bearing Oh man, good thing I was barbless. I just stuck my finger. Run the bead around the corner. You gotta give it a little push to get it to click through, but then it bounces right around the corner. And now the clevis will spin. The clevis will spin on that bearing. All right. So now that we have our bead on, let's tie on the marabou body. Trusty, trusty vice. Oh no, I just wound the thread out. There we go. 
We're back. Let's point this down a little bit. And help let gravity work for us. Let's see, how does that look? About there. Maybe a little higher up. A little higher up. How's that look? I'm using the thread to determine where I want the body of the fly to start in proportion to the spinner and how much shank there is. And I think that looks pretty good. So then the body will, of the fly will end right about here. I don't want it to go too far out because then you end up with a lot of short strikes. So I want this pretty small. So you need enough room on the shank. So you need enough room on the shank to build the fly, but you don't want, like I said, you don't want to crowd the clevis into the eye because that wouldn't look good either. So I picked out some sh pretty short marabou fibers. Pull out this little section. See how this looks laying down. And remember, we don't want to go too far past the hook. So we're going to do our first set like, oh, oops. I had the thread lower down. Now a problem I have is I almost, I really have a, a common problem, a common mistake I make. A common mistake I make is making my flies too long. They stick out too far. This needs to be a little more pinned down before I start cutting on it. Okay, first little bunch. I already pulled some off, didn't I? The second little bunch, lining it up with the first. Now with marabou, when you're tying it and it's all, all the, mar the fibers are dry, a little bit looks like a lot, but it's not. Once it gets wet, it freaking disappears. It'll look like this big giant poopy fly and then you get it wet and then it's a horse hair. It's nothing. So we went side to side and I'll add to the bottom. And a little trick here, let me clean this up. A little trick here with marabou and other fibers is I want it, I want this section, this clump on the bottom. So I'm going to lay it on the side here. And when I wrap it, it's going to rotate to the bottom. You see that? So at my first wrap, I pulled until it rolled over to where I wanted it. Secure it and trim it. But marabou is pretty forgiving stuff. This end stuff I'll just fold back and pin. All right, now looking up the fly skirt from the back to the front, I can see where I'm missing some fiber and there's an obvious hole right there And 
moment. I might put it where I wanted it, so now I gotta hold it down. Wrap it. Do do do. like that. It's a little uneven in the back, but we can fix that way. Pinching off a few of these. And one thing, especially if you do it right and you leave and you're using the ends of the the fibers so they taper down naturally, this, if you notice, it's got a, a much thicker bought head and then it will taper down. So in the water it will look more like a minnow. One of the problems with your, a lot of the the one of the problems with a lot of spinners that you buy in the store this looks like a broom there's no tapering there's no definition this will probably swim looking like a cheese wedge on the end of this now it'll still work but i don't think it gives a, a very good profile the thing i don't like is on a lot of spinners the blade has there's a big disconnect from the blade and the body of the, the of the fly on the hook so it almost looks like two different lures with this you'll see that it's the blade is right on top and it gives it a more uniform profile. It's, it's one piece. Now, another thing I don't like is on spinners of similar size this is a size two Panther Martin. Look how tiny this hook is. I have lost so many fish on small hooks. One of the worst ones is that little, the little rebel, uh, the little crawdad lure by Rebel, I forget what it's called, like the little crawdad crank, crawfish crankbait, the little guy. Anyways, they've got really small hooks. I've lost so many smallmouth bass and trout on those hooks until I switched over to, do I have any here? Yes, I do. These repl these single replacement hooks, these wider gap hooks, and you can get them all, all sorts of different sizes. Well, they stick a lot more fish than these tiny little treble hooks do. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the distance between the the hook point and where the, the the bend. I'm not sure, but I lose so many fish with little treble hooks. I've tried to get rid of them as often as I can. So with this, you've got a nice size six single shank hook on there, or single uh, single hook and. When, when the, when you hook a fish, it's hooked. I have only lost, have I lost one yet that I've had on? I've had a, a few misses and short strikes. Um, but I haven't actually like had one on. I'm fighting the fish and then it gets off because of it. All right, we're going to add a little red. A lot of red. Let's choke that up a little bit. There we go. A little little color, a little red. Let's do a dab of glue and then add some more thread. And this spinner is finished. Like I said, cheap spinner. Those packs, the beads, the bead I used, uh, I think I paid. It's a pack of 50 and I think it was like three or four dollars for the pack. Um, they're not solid brass, they're hollow. Um, but I have not had them corrode or fade or do anything weird yet. So that's good. The hooks, the hook, these hooks, because I bought them in a single pack, they're a little more. So probably the, 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 most expensive thing on this lure is the hook. All right, now the glue's dry, we're gonna go out and fish this lure, see how it works. One thing I really like about uh, this streamer spinner 
is how lightweight it is. And if I need it to swim heavier, I can add split shot to the leader and keep the lure light. What I really like about a light, a light lure in water. And one thing that the lure Jensen needlefish excels at <clears throat> is phenomenal. It's the lure Jensen needlefish is phenomenal for this in current. You'll have the water flowing. And if there's a rock or anything, the water is moving left and right up and down. It's doing everything with a heavy lure that that lure just trawls through the water and might get bumped a little bit, but with a needle fish or our streamer spinner, because it's so light, any little buffeting has your spinner doing this as well as the blade spinning going through the water. It gives it a lot more action and looks a lot more like a small minnow fighting the current. I think that, uh, I think that helps a lot. You can also pause the spinner and let it flutter down slightly. So you're, you're dragging it across the current. There's a rock, there's a hole. You drag it into there, you pause it, you let it, you, you pull it through. Sometimes that pause, the fish will come, the fish will come up from behind the rock and, and eat it that way. So very, very, uh, having a light lure is, it can be very useful. And like I said, if you're, you fish a deeper hole, you can pull out a couple split, split shots, throw them on the leader, and then you're now fishing deeper in the water, but still maintaining that fluttering, struggling bait fish look, which I really like. All right, let's go fish. thing about spinners and, and little spoons, light spinners and spoons, is you retrieve them in the current and you can retrieve them really slowly upstream. So especially in this dirty water, the trout get a, they get an opportunity. It's not, you're not dragging it across the bottom, so it's coming pretty slow. So they can, they can, they can find it. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, can you underhand cast? I almost always tangle the tip under hand casting. Has anybody else experienced that? And now it's not tangled. So. size 16 no size 18 blah 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 no with this partridge booby instead of this chicken ass yeah i don't know about all that i have found that big old honking trout will gobble a ball of power bait floating two feet off the bottom just floating there, all gummed up on a on a treble hook. Cast it out, sit down, go fish with with another rod with lures, and trout will nail that freaking big red ball or big pink ball of power bait quite often. I've caught some very big trout doing that in lakes. And they may be hatchery and they might not be, you know, the, the smartest trout, but trout like colorful things. said that was a little too fast and we got a trout right here. I was just right here next to me where I've been standing. 
I was saying this is a little, the water's a little too fast and just kind of playing around with the lure and a trout came up right here and nailed it. Man, I hope you saw that. That was cool. Yeah. And I, I've heard it before. I don't know if I've said it, but you can never doubt where trout are. That's the kind of the thing we're talking about. The guys that reel their line in real fast because all oh, that I gotta get back to the fishable water, the fishy water. It's like I thought that was too fast for the too fast for that lure to be fishing because it was only about an inch under the surface. The blade was just screaming. Look at that, you guys. Another pretty, pretty, pretty fish. The nice thing about the rain is your hands are always wet. Oh man. There you go. Oh, and another not elegant release. Oh well. I didn't touch him. So there's that part. Great little rubber nets. They're super nice. They don't tangle the fish. I mean, they don't tangle the lure. They don't remove a lot of slime. That's all it is. It's about a maybe a dollar fifty to make this, maybe. Maybe a dollar. You buy the hooks up in a pack of a hundred, you're gonna pay you know pennies for the hook. So guys, I reeled in and I just kind of let it sw swing over here. And I was just goofing around, looking at the spinner in the water. I don't know if you can see the spinner there. I was like, oh yeah, it looks a little too fast. I was just about to pick it up, and that's when that guy nailed it. great things about cloudy water is the trout. I mean, I caught a fish here. I landed a fish here. I released a fish. I've been standing here talking and fishing for the last five or 10 minutes. And that trout was sitting there the whole time, not caring that I was there. Oh, we got some moss. Stick it out and put it right up against the roots. Can't do that with a short rod unless you go over and cross and get up. Oh, there's a, there's a fish. Only like t 10 inches of line out. Come on. You know you want it. Come on. Bob and Dave wanted it. along a creek because when it floods it'll gouge out holes and do different things uh, especially around tr like tree stumps and it'll make a big hole and that hole then could fill with mud and then you could be kind of SOL so there's a couple times where I've almost stepped off into nothing, walking just like this, you gotta look. And then there's the wild boar you gotta worry about. But honestly, you can smell them. They stink. Ooh, nettles are getting through the pants. Oh, this looks like a good spot. There we go. kid I lived in Montana for a while and one summer the first summer I was there I did a lot of creek fishing and there were so many trout and so many small trout 
you get a little, catch a tiny little grasshopper, throw on the hook and just drop it in around rocks, over little ripples, and you, you just catch trout after trout. They're all four or five inches. They're all small, small, small. The creek was so clear and the older ones were so smart. You gotta think there's coyotes and all kinds of stuff. Eat, eating them, birds. So they don't, uh, the older ones knew better. They saw any kind of motion, they were gone. So you come poking your head over the trees and all the big ones would scurry, but all the little ones are still ready to get eaten. Oh shit, right there. Oh man. You see that? You hit right here. Man. How many fish are gonna freaking eat this? That was a nice trout too. Are gonna eat this thing right at my feet. He had it in his mouth enough, he'll probably not come back for it. Definitely wish I had brought the boots. Forgot the boots. Isn't that a nice little hole? Pretty. Avoid the potentially deep mud. Go for some gravel. Yay, gravel. Pretty here, huh? Oh, oh, there we go. So the creek splits, and I'm walking down the middle. Little hole right in front of us. There we go, there's our cast. Now I can see. Oop, missed him. There was a little trout. Crap. Yeah, here's that hole. There's one little trout in there. But he wasn't too interested. That's really sticky. That would have been convenient to not even have to try for the in the sticks yet. out of there I have no idea Colors. Brown trout are so pretty.
and they just disappear. He's right there. And I even have a fancy iPro one. I can't see him. All right, so setting up for this shot here with the, tr the camera on the tripod. Right over there, I already startled a fish. It's about 40 feet away. So this might be all for naught. We'll see. Hey, kind of high up. So anyways, let's go and see if we can't catch a already startled fish. Learning. Using these thistles to hide behind, and that's what I should have done with the camera. But I need to set the camera there so I could be in front of it. Rod set down, get the fishing so high up. There's a thump. The spinner is. Oh! Oh man, always rising, lifting the rod. Freaking swiped it. That is so annoying. Come on. Nobody. No takers. It's actually a nice little hold back behind us here where I'm not pointing the camera, but I have yet to make a good call. You always have to be very careful on what you're stepping on next to a ledge. I'm trying to cast around a tree. I'm not able to. There we go. Oop, got him. Little guy. Knew he'd be there. And that's still wet. Bone dry. Well, kinda screwed myself here. You can hear it, but you can't see it. brown just rose right on the other side of that log. Really nice brown. Right there in front of me. Oh yeah. It's on like Donkey Kong. Okay, let's sneak around. It wasn't too slow. Man, all the times. I think it's too fast. I think it's too slow. These freaking trout proved me wrong. trout and logs. Waist deep in nettles. This is Texas. How worried would you be about freaking snakes and all this grass? Terrible. Yeah, the spinner doesn't spin all that well. 
but when it's not spinning, it kind of acts like a chatterbait and gives it a slight side to side motion. Oop, the bank that wouldn't go on me, the bank's starting to let go on me. Oh, oh god, yes, yes, that was a perfect cast. Actually, went right over the end of the log, but he didn't come out. Whoosh, that was a perfect cast. Whew, let's, uh, let's try that again. Nope. It's a little fishy over there, though. In the shade. Nothing. Try to improve our accuracy by getting closer. I'll continue. than the treble. Yeah, we pulled something off of the top there. Knew I just had to get close. <laughs> uh, oh, that was work. That was work. Nope. <laughs> sure enough. I overcasted it, stopped it. The spinner dropped right next to the log and fluttered down. I didn't, I didn't reel. I let it flutter down. As soon as I started to pull it, he shot out from under the log and grabbed it. What do you think of that, ladies and gentlemen? Woo! Oh, and my butt's wet. That is a nice small stream brown trout. Spinner we made this morning. He is dark. Super dark. Oh man. That was work. <laughs> Oh, fish came up and hit it, but missed. It was in the swift current. 
Got him. Nope, I got off. Got him. Ah, oh, I got off. Where is he? Got him again. Got off. Must be little. Ooh, I'm really surprised that we didn't get a fish here. This looks good. Sorry guys, my desire to fish is stronger than my desire. Oh, there, I knew there'd be a little guy in there. Oh, a little guy. Oh, he's off. Little tiny guy. Again, these little tiny holes. I'm not even engaging the spinner. I'm letting it slowly fall. That spinner blade is actually helping it to to fall really slowly. With a little side to side action, which is pretty nice. If I took that split shot off, it would be even more so. Check this spot out right here. Look at that. Doesn't that look like a nice little hole? Maybe up on the other side. But that's the type of spot you drop a little worm down into and let it go under. See, see what pops. See what grabs it. But that's a, a little trout jump came out of there. I'm gonna use a little guy, maybe a little eight incher. Stuff I'm standing on is not what I would call solid. Junk over here. Oh, there he is. I knew there'd be one in there. Now, how to get down there. Oh, how to get down there the quick way. Another beautiful brown. Man. Dark. There he is, guys.
Melissa wouldn't want to give me two after I make it down here. Bucktail just turns into that. Now in the water it's a little more a little fuller, but not bucktail. As I was saying before, all that marabou when dry, you get it wet, it looks like nothing. Now in the water it's a little there's a little more, but a lot of marabou goes a little way. Whoo! So didn't drop the camera. Yeah! Battery's about to die. Let's see if we can get one more fish out of this little spot. situation. Oh, mud. Not too bad. Sometimes the mud on the bank can be feet deep. There we go. Or not. And there's nothing coming out of those roots. Right in my eye. That's the spot. Come on. Somewhere in this little ripple here, there's a fish.
had him. I saw him swipe at it, and I let it go. And bit it. Train tunnel. That's pretty cool. Of course, there's a friggin' stick sticking out of the water. Can't do that with a short rod. Oh. Oh. There he was. That was the fish. Oh, again. Two. That was a really good cat. Got him. Finally. Definitely a nice trout. They're getting spoiled when 10, 12 inch trout are. They're getting spoiled when 10, 12 inch trout are not the uh, ooh la la of the day. Oh. Watching the 
is the uncut angling, the Manitoba, Manitoba, Canada. Ooh. These trout are what they, those trout eat for breakfast. Oh, that'll get that. I can make another fish right there. There he is. Called it. That was a really good cast. That's ready. Whenever the fish is ready. All right. <laughs> the streamer spinner works, people. You can catch plenty of fine trout. On a one to two dollar lure, depending on if you buy in bulk or not. We eat it good. Uh oh. A lot of blood. A lot of blood. to swim. We'll let him swim. Let him swim. Wasn't... Oh, man. No. Come on. Get out of the fucking He's done. He's done. Well, we're keeping one. You can keep two in this creek. And he just swam back to me swimming on the surface, so he's already swimming in circles. That's too bad. The, the club that I'm a member of that manages these waters, and we're the only ones allowed to fish here, we have several uh, small lakes that they stock with trout. So if we want to eat trout, that's where we go. We go catch trout from there. We don't, uh, we don't take from here. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. Popping up all the little snails and stuff he's been eating. There you go. That'll be quick. Touch your heart. That'll be quick, little guy. Hey, so with the streamer spinner works. Yay, I knew it would. I've used it before, but that works pretty well. Um, what I really liked is how there was a lot of times where I didn't even have to use it as a spinner. I believe the, bla the, the shape of the blade was what was keeping it from spinning. I turned around and was using a, another small spinner that was a Colorado blade, like... Here are the tiny little Colorado blades. So the spinner that we were using was, well, it was another one of these. But see how long it is? It's like an Indiana kind of deal. Can you see that? Long, not round. Colorado blades are shaped like this and round. And I had a spinner that I was using that was a, another small, like a size one or zero uh, Colorado sp uh, blade on another spinner. And it spins phenomenally well, super good at, re at even slower speeds. You don't have to jerk start it, it just always turns. So I think if I get a hold of some really small Colorado spinners, we could make that, we could make the, the streamer spinner spin more often. Even though it didn't spin, I was able to use it like a streamer a lot of the time. And even that, the blade uh, not moving would help the, the it would help the spinner to flutter down so I could cast it out and just kind of give it a little bit of tension and it would flutter down and look nice and a lot of those small little holes you'll notice there's not a lot of room there's you you cast out there's the spot the fish is there's the log there's whatever there you're not pulling this lure across a big stream so 
it worked. And then there's other times where I was able to get a long cast and reel it and get the spinner going and it worked too. So it's, it's a versatile lure that works really well. It's not super snaggy because of that. It's only one hook instead of a little treble hook, which acts like a grappling hook and catches everything. And I think it's a, it's a repeatable, it's a repeatable lure. If you can get a hold of some of the materials, you can make some of these spinners for a few bucks, have a ball. If you lose some, it's not that big a deal. It's not like going out and buying a $5 Panther Martin. You spend a couple bucks on it and you can go make another one and try different colors and try black, try white, try chartreuse. Um, I think black would be phenomenal, a phenomenal color for it. Um, but yeah, so long video. Let me know how, if you, if the video was too long, if that's not a style that you would like, if you would prefer the videos broken up, maybe build, fish, review, something like that. So it's not, we're not getting these, you know, over hour videos. If you like the whole process all at once, let me know, please. I, I'm new to this. I don't see a lot of super long videos. Um, Robert Field makes some pretty good fishing videos and all of his I was looking are under 30 minutes. So and a lot of fishing videos are even 10, 15 minutes. So we'll, uh, we gotta figure out if, if that is what you guys want. Thank you, thank you. My name is Aaron. This is Garrett's Custom and Outdoors, and I will see you next time. Bye. To the left, to the right. Oh. Making old man noises when I fall now. Oh.